Hello, in this video we will see how to work with the Level Manager and the new features in Visual R3. We can open the Level Manager from the Visual R documentation toolbar from this icon. And this dialog will appear. In this model we already have a building created with a list of levels. Each level has a construction plane located at a specific elevation that we can edit from these values. And by clicking on this icon next to each level, we will be able to change the position of the construction plane and quickly work from one level to another. We can create new buildings by clicking on this icon and then selecting the corresponding building. We can add new levels by clicking on this button again. The level's elevation is related to the building. If we change the elevation of that building to 1, it means that the elevations of these levels will change. Now we can also see these elevations by global values or by relative values by clicking on this button. In this case, I'm going to delete this building now. One of the new features in Visual R3 is the option to assign a boundary to a building. And we can do it from this icon next to the building. When we click on it, we can set a new boundary, define it as a rectangle. As soon as we do it, we can see this boundary represented with this dotted line type. And it will appear every time we select the building. We can also see that this icon has changed as soon as the building got a boundary. We can reassign a new boundary by clicking this icon again and defining a new rectangle, or we can do it from an existing curve by selecting from curves option. But the selected curve must be a closed convex polyline with at most eight edges. If we select the option no, we will remove the boundary from the building. I'm going to select it again. Also, as soon as we assign a boundary to a building, a light bulb appears next to this environment entity. The environment is the area surrounding a building boundary, and it only appears when we have a building with a boundary. If we hide the environment, everything around that boundary will hide. But also, we can just hide the building and everything inside that boundary will hide. If we do right click on the building, we can isolate it, so only the geometry inside that boundary will appear in the scene. If we do right click on the building, we can see some more options. For example, we can extract the boundary to modify the curve that can be used to create a, a new boundary. We can also remove it and we have some other options as well. So in this case, I'm going to set a new boundary and we can define it from the top viewport, something more accurate to our building. The fact that the building has a boundary, it will also affect the level's visibility. So when we hide levels, only the part of the level inside the boundary will hide. And now we can also hide non-consecutive levels. We can also isolate them if we do right click and select isolate. A new feature in Visual R3 is also the option to add new sublevels, and we can do it from this icon. We need to first select the desired level and then click on this icon, which will add a new sublevel one meter above the selected level by default. For example, we will create a new sublevel that will be placed on the platform. We can change the name of it. And now we'll have the option to switch the construction plane of that level. And now if we see the model from the front view, we can also see a reference mark of that level. We can change its elevation by editing this value. If we click on this rule arrow, 
we will be able to define the elevation directly in the model. And now we have the new sublevel in the desired location. We can change the position of the construction plane and everything that we draw here will be created on top of that level. Sublevels, like other levels, also have a cut plane located in relation to the sublevels elevation. In Visual R3, we have the option to update the object's location when we change a level's elevation. And we can do it when we activate this constraints icon next to the level that we want to edit. For example, we enable it on the floor 2. I'm going to show this model in section to see that better. And we have the elevation of the floor 2 along that level over here. Now we change that level elevation, for example, to 6.3. And as you can see, all the objects have updated their height and their position to update their location accordingly. If we want to sum a specific object, do not update their position when the level where it is located is edited. We need to select the object. For example, imagine we don't want to change that object's position. And from the properties, we need to go to this constraints icon here and uncheck the option to link to levels. In any case, if you don't want any objects update their location by mistake, just unselect this constraints icon. Now let's see how to show the model in reflected sailing plan view. We can do it from the top viewport. And when we select any level and we activate the cut plane, the model is displayed with a 2D plan view representation. And the cut plane is activated on the last visible level. Now, if we select a level and we want to show it in a reflected plan view, we can select this icon and align that ceiling plan view to the selected level. Now, the reflected ceiling plan view will be visible on the lower visible level. We can change the view to the normal floor plan view if we select the level, click on this icon and align floor plan. If we need to set up a reflective plan view on the page layout, we just need to click inside the detail view, select the desired floor, and in this case, select this option that will activate the reflective setting plan view on this viewport according to the building's boundary. We'll just need to adjust the scale of this view by the detail properties. If we explore the other features in the level manager, we can see this icon that will enable the synchronization of our level states in all viewports. Right now, we have different level states in each view. So when we click on this icon, all the viewports will synchronize with the current one. And we can click here again to change the level stage in each viewport individually. Also, there is the option to save this level stage, and we can do it from the level stage manager. When we open this dialog, we can save the current level stage as a new state. We can call this all. Now, for example, let's isolate the ground floor. 
and we will save this as a new level state. Now we can select one of these two level states and load it into our model. As the last new feature to show you in this video, we can see how to create multiple levels at once when we are editing a building. Imagine that we have another building and we want to add, let's say, 10, 20 levels. We do right click on the building and select this Add Levels option. This dialog will appear. We just need to type here the number of levels, the star number, all the level settings, and we can see here a preview of how this list of levels will be generated. Also, we can change the direction. And change here the wording. We click OK. And all the levels will be generated. I'm going to delete this by now. Thanks for watching.